is my first lesson on the waves of the electromagnetic spectrum. Since we're going to look at all the types of electromagnetic waves, and they have a basic structure, which is created from a static charge, which would have a electric field around it, and then a magnetic field that is created from a moving charge. As you see, there's a, a moving charge going on here. And the two fields, they, they vibrate at 90 degrees from each other. So there's your magnetic field this way, your electric field that way. And all the waves of the electromagnetic spe spectrum would be a, a transverse, it's like a double transverse wave, just like this one you see here. So as we go through the waves of the, spec the spectrum, we're going to go from radio waves, which will have the largest wavelength, to microwaves, which get a little bit shorter. And, and just going with that, when you have the largest wavelength, you also have the lowest frequency and the lowest energy. So it goes with radio, microwave, infrared, then visible light, then ultraviolet light, then x-ray, and finally you have gamma rays. In uh, gamma rays, you have the shortest wavelength, highest frequency, and most energy. So let's go through these individually and just look at some examples. First of all, radio waves, um, they have the longest wavelength. So you find them all the way on the left of this picture. And the, 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 the ruler that I had up there was for wavelength. And so they have the longest wavelength, but that means they have the lowest frequency and, and least energy. And some examples, uh, your radio uses radio waves, TVs, um, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi devices use, use, uh, use radio waves as well to communicate with each other. In the FM, when you hear something like 95.5, um, that's talking about frequency mod modulation, and that is in megahertz, which is the same as saying uh, 1 million hertz, or waves per second. Just remember, hertz means waves per second. When you're listening to AM radio, it's called amplitude modulation, and this is in kilohertz, uh, which is... 1000 hertz or waves per second so this is a lower frequency so the am radio would have had a, a bigger wavelength so it would be closer down to the left side microwaves um they have the sh they have a shorter wavelength and greater frequency uh, than radio waves so we're going to get more and more energy as we go to the right and smaller wavelengths as we, as we go to the right a microwave is an example and what that's going to do is it's just going to vibrate your food particles and as they vibrate that energy heats up the food particles and then you know you let it cool down for a little bit and you can eat it infrared waves so we're getting that a little bit more energy now a little shorter wavelength um, these are gonna these are gonna have um, these these are often used for like remote controls night vision if you ever have a remote control where you you need to be like have an actual visual line to a device it's probably going to be infrared if if you don't need that visual line and you can kind of go through a blanket or, or something that's in front of it then it's probably going to be a wi-fi remote control the night vision just it detects the heat um kind of the the what well, the red the the infrared um coming from from individuals mammals when you get to the visible light waves, um, this is something that your eyes are going to use. So we're getting we're getting a little bit more energy, uh, uh, even shorter wavelength, and that's the reason why you can see. And so here's a question: Why can't you see all the waves of the electromagnetic spectrum? And the key reason here is because you can only your eyes only sense that little tiny area. It's a very small area of that electromagnetic spectrum. As you get a little bit more energy and we get to ultraviolet uh, ultraviolet waves, so a little shorter wavelength, a little more energy, and just notice how the energy is increasing in these animations as we go. Um, some examples of UV light are the sun gives off UV light, tanning beds. Um, you can even use UV light to sterilize some things. As we get to, through UV light and we go into X-ray and then we go to gamma, Ray, we'll get more and more energy, and they get a little more dangerous. They can penetrate your skin, um, cause some some yeah, mutations, extra mutations in DNA, and and that could cause problems. So we get more and more dangerous from here. X-rays, X-rays are going to be look at the energy rate. There's a lot more energy going on, and with X-rays, you're going to have uh, even shorter wavelength, even higher fre frequency. And X-ray machines use this because they can penetrate through through your skin. Um, and as they penetrate through your skin, they actually get slowed down or they get stopped by, by lead or thicker things. Um, if, if you're trying to protect yourself, and the reason why they work is because your bones are denser than your skin. So the dense bones have trouble for these x-rays. These x-rays can't get through the, the dense bones. And then therefore, as everything gets through, 
um, you'll see the you'll see your bones because the x-rays didn't get through on the film that catches that x-ray on the other side of, of whatever you're taking a picture of but the lead lead is pretty thick and x-rays have trouble getting through it so you don't want that extra radi radiation that's why a, a radiation tech would cover you up with some sort of lead vest of some sort we get the gamma rays you get tons and tons of energy they're the shortest wavelength, highest frequency, highest energy, and they get a little more penetrating and dangerous. Now with gamma rays, because they're dangerous, they're actually more dangerous for new cells. And often when someone has maybe a cancer of some sort, that's usually new growth that can't control its growth. So if you use radiation therapy, it's more likely to kill that new growth, those new cancer cells, than it is to kill your cells. But then you have side effects since um, your hair, you have new hair follicles, growing hair all the time, and that those can die. And that's why some people will lose hair when they're on radiation therapy. It's the most penetrating um, due to their high energy, high frequency. That's part of the reason why they're, they're really dangerous. They can just get through your skin and, and, and get to places you don't want them to be. Okay, so here's some questions. Uh, does a radio wave or visible light have a higher frequency? And so the way I would ask any question or answer any question here, I would draw this little diagram right here. And then from there, I would go start thinking about the you know, radio first, microwave. One way to do it is visibles in the middle. So visibles in the middle, and then you got infrared. Well, the, the bottom part of, of, of visible light is red. So below red is called infrared. Um, I know radio is in the front. Once again, this is just a possible way that you can remember it. You just got to find your way to remember it. Then um, just kind of going from there, microwave. So not too dangerous. You know, you're, you can actually see light, but then you start getting a little bit more dangerous after that. Violet is up over here, and above that is called ultraviolet. And then from there, we get a little more dangerous x-rays. And then finally, we finish off with gamma. So um, if you remember just some sort of way to remember these, draw a little diagram, a little light diagram going from, draw a little, you know, a bigger wavelength getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So maybe something like this, and then let's label them, radio, microwave, infrared, uh, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, and then gamma, and then you can use it to answer questions. So now here's our question. Visible light or radio wave? So radio wave or visible light? Have a higher frequency while well, it's further to the right, so it's going to be visible light. Okay, visible light. Okay, does X ray or microwave have a longer wavelength? So we want to find the longer wavelength is going to be closer to the left side, and we'll take a look at microwave or X ray. Well, microwave, the microwave is going to be the one that has the not longer wavelength because it's closer to the left side. Does infrared or ultraviolet have a greater energy? So we have to find infrared and ultraviolet. Infrared um, or ultraviolet have greater energy. Well, energy goes with frequency. And frequency, we're looking at the, the one that has the greatest frequency is going to be closer to the right. So UV light will be your answer here. Is an X-ray or, or microwave more penetrating and dangerous? And if you take a look further to the right, the worst it is. Microwaves are, are bad if you're in a microwave, but the microwave waves itself is not really a bad thing. Um, so it's going to be, uh, x-ray is going to be more penetrating and dangerous because it's further to the right, more energy. Now when we get to um, the problems we're going to do in a few seconds, we're going to be using this, this value called C, which is the speed of, of any sort of electromagnetic wave. It's called often called just the speed of light, and it's going to be light in space. Um, air is pretty close, but light in space, and it's going to be 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. If you're in my class, it's on your equation sheet, but it's a universal speed limit. Nothing can go faster than it. All, it's not just light, even though it's called the speed of light often. Um, it's all, all these waves, radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultralight, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma rays are all, are all, uh, all go at that universal speed limit. So C is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th. Um, just watch out for that. Any, if I say there's a microwave traveling through air or space, you'll see in the, in the next slide, it's pretty close. You're going to go with 3 times 10 to the 8th at its, as its velocity. So you're going to use C in some equation in a, in a further a future unit. But for now, we're, anytime we're doing a problem like this and it's, these things are in air, we're just going to say V is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay, and this is why in air, if you take a look, go back right here, 300 million versus 299 point or comma 
it light does slow down in air, but it doesn't slow down enough to where the rounding really makes a difference. So that's why we're using a velocity of 3 times 10 to the 8th in our problems. And these are the wave equations we're going to look at. Just a basic velocity equation. If, if a wave is acting like just an object moving a distance over time. And then if you're given the number of waves per second and how big the waves are, you're going to be using that V equals wavelength frequency equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and try some of these. Uh, what is the wavelength? question mark of a 5.2 times 10 to the fifth Hertz radio wave and then this is where okay well it's a radio wave you need to remember V is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the eighth so that's key here in this unit I don't have to tell you or the teacher doesn't have to tell you that the velocity is a certain thing if it's in air if they don't say otherwise just assume it's in air and go with this. So we're going to solve for wavelength, which is equal to when you rearrange this equation, we're going to go ahead and divide out the F, divide out the F, and you get V over F. So wavelength equals V, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th over 5.2 times 10 to the 5th. And when we do the math, so my calculator is 3 second E8. I have a TI-84 if you're using one of those equals to get it in the memory divided by it's always good to have parentheses even though you don't, don't need it if you type it in the way I'm saying it 5.2 second e and that's going to be 5 sorry my 5 doesn't look like a 5 there and we're going to get a wavelength of 577 and it's going to be meters the unit for wavelength will be meters what's the wavelength of uh so same sort of problem what's the wavelength of a frequency of 1.5 times 10 to the 6 hertz and it is a electromagnetic wave because it's a radio wave still so 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second we were already rearranged this equation last time wavelength was v over f so wavelength equals 3 v 3.0 times 10 to the 8 over frequency 1.5 times 10 to the 6 and so i get um, 3 second E8 equals divided by 1.5 second E6. Once again, extra parentheses is good, but if you're using the exponent button, sometimes depending on what calculator you have, it'll do it for you. It'll keep it together. You just want to make sure everything in this denominator is put together. If you're typing it in parts, your calculator is going to give you an error. Not an error. It's going to give you an answer that's wrong. Um, because it'll, it'll take these as two numbers. But if you're doing the exponent button, E on my TI-84 calculator, um, it keeps it together. Extra parentheses, just a good thing. Just be careful. So 200 meters is the answer here. Um, does a 5.2 times 10 to the 5th hertz or 1.5 times 10 to the 6th hertz AM radio wave have a longer wavelength? So this is where you have to watch out. This number does not mean it's bigger. This number is actually 5.2. We're going to take this decimal place. We're going to move it five places. One. Two, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four. This number is five two zero 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 zero, or five hundred and twenty um, thousand hertz. Whereas this number right here, one point five times ten to the six. Take this and move one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is one five zero 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 zero. This is one one hundred and fifty one one million five hundred thousand hertz. And so this is a, this is actually bigger frequency. So therefore, it's a lower wavelength. So which one has a longer wavelength? Well, the answer is going to be this one because the question is asked, asking which one has a longer wavelength. So therefore, we want the longer wavelength is going to have the smaller smaller frequency so the 5.2 times 10 to the fifth hertz will be the answer here because it's actually it's actually a, a smaller number for, for frequency bigger number for wavelength okay what is the frequency of electromagnetic wave that has a wavelength of this okay so what's the frequency of an electromagnetic wave so it doesn't say anything about where it's at so i'm assuming it's going to be in air so 3.0 times 10 to the 8th and we have a wavelength of 10,000 meters and just like when you're solving for the, the the wavelength if you're trying to solve for frequency you're going to divide out what you don't need because these are all in the numerator 
you can divide out wavelength and you end up getting frequency equals velocity over wavelength. So frequency equals the velocity of 3.0 times 10 to the 8th over 10,000. So 3 second e8 equals divided by 10,000. And I get 30,000 hertz. There's your answer. How long does it take for light from the sun to reach the earth? This many 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters away. Okay, so time equals question mark. How long does it take? And then, you know, if you ever confer, confuse this long, it sounds like, oh, well, it could be distance or, or, or a displacement of some sort. Well, they tell you there's a displacement here, so this has to be the time. So how long in time does it take um, to go a distance of 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters? And it's light, and it's in space, so that's C. But we're just going to go with a velocity, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th. And so we go ahead and we range this for t. This is in the denominator, so we actually have to multiply it out. And then after that, we now have to divide out the v. We don't want v there. So we divide out the v, and that gets t equals x over v. t equals x, which is, sorry, I put d here. We've been using x in my class. Um, 1.5 times 10 to the 11th, and that's going to be over 3.0 times 10 to the 8th. And we get 1.5 second e11 equals divided by, open parentheses, 3 second e8, close parentheses, and I get t equals 500 seconds. So you don't see the sunlight that's actually occurring right now for 500 seconds. 500 seconds later, you'll actually see what happened on the sun. Now, uh, if the speed of a wave remains constant and the wavelength triples, how does frequency compare? So here you have um, speed of the wavelength is going to be the same. Uh, sorry, the speed of the wave remains constant. So it's, the V is going to be 1 times whatever it was. The wavelength is going to be 3 times whatever it was. Um, it says nothing about, um, so the wavelength is going to triple. It, it's, it's asking you how frequency compares. So this is going to be a, 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 a Rule of one's problem. To do a rule of one's problem, we have to find the equivalent of f using an equation that's related. Then this is the equation that's related. We're actually going to rearrange it for f. So f equals v over wavelength. And this is the equivalent of f. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up a ratio v over wavelength, v over wavelength. And this is going to be the original. And this is going to be the new. And anything that's whatever it was before or it's original, we're going to just multiply it by one. So that's actually why we're going to put a one and a one down here. So it's just kind of a ratio and we want to make sure that this will equal one even and although it does, you can leave it off in most cases. It's good just to do it, just to make sure. But that's going to be one. And then here it's saying the velocity is the same, but the wavelength, or the wavelength is three times. So here's a ratio of one third over one, which is just equal to one third or 0 0.33. And that would be Hertz because it's frequency. And there you go, hopefully that's